Yes, members of the Manufacturer Association of Nigeria, MAN, have strongly supported last week's decision by the Central Bank of Nigeria to discontinue with the weekly sale of the U.S. dollars to Bureau of Change Operators. MAN, in a statement titled, MAN's Perspective on the CBN New Policy on FX Allocation to BDC, signed by its DG, uh, Shegu Ajayi Kadri, stated that the directive of the CBN on the BDC uh, corroborated with its view and may help address the, um, uh, the many, many issues, uh, uh, many, many activities of operators in the BDC. Okay, quickly, we are being joined, yes, by the DG himself of uh, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, We're talking about um, uh, Shegun Wajai Kadri. Let's discuss manufacturers' perspective to this suspension of... Uh, Allocation to uh, to BDC. So good to have you join us on today's business, uh, Doctor uh, Ajay. I thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Yes, so good to have you joined us uh, in uh, such a um, short notice. Yes, uh, the last story I just read did say that um, man is of course in support of um, this 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 move by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Did you see this coming as an association? Well, generally speaking, I think uh, this decision of the CBA is bringing the matter closer to what we have always advocated, that there should be a single window for the allocation of forex. This is because it will allow foreign exchange to flow, especially to the productive sector, which we critically need at this time. Uh, however, it is important to state that that in itself may not be all that is required, but it's a step in the right direction. Of course, the central bank will have to ensure that they effectively fund the commercial banks so that they'll be able to meet the needs of the economy. So we are looking to a situation where the BDCs that have largely gone beyond their brief, so to say, I mean, they are supposed to be at the retail end users so that they'll be able to meet the finances of those that are demanding five thousand uh, dollars and below uh there are, but, but they have since uh, changed in, in in the roles that they are playing so we are saying that in order not to crowd out uh the essential uh, sectors of the economy we needed to have some discipline about how forex is allocated this is coming within the background of the scarcity of forex and the need for us to reflate our economy and get our country on the path. So there is need for you to take strong action. So I think this is a very strong action. It may not go down well with many people, but it is important for us to take this step at the right time. Then it should be supported by adequate funding of the commercial banks' needs for forex and ensuring that, and that's more important, ensuring that it flows to the productive sector. If we have a structured environment, the, the, the rate of depreciation of the Naira against the dollar will, will be reduced. And that is the time that we can really make progress. Okay, uh, um, DG, uh, no, no, no doubt uh, these, of course, will come with some of its um, downsides. Uh, uh, well, uh, huge. Um, upsides, but then with some downsides. I, I'm looking at the figures right now, and I can see the the current um, uh, rate, the com current rate in the black market. And then you still begin to realize that um, it is still a source of effects uh, for certain players within the nation's economy. Uh, let's look at it. What for you could be the downsides uh, to this development? It could be temporal, but then what are the downsides of this development? There are obviously going to be downsides, and uh, uh, this is not to take away from the roles, the positive roles that the broad exchange have played. Because when we manufacturers couldn't assess the forex from the regular commercial bank, we have had to resort to the BDCs, and of course we we, we have to borrow. I mean, we have to exchange at their rates, which is obviously high. So they have played their, their roles. And then the downside to this is the fact that there may be initial uh, 
uh, increase in the rate at which you exchange because uh, the, the, the commercial banks will not be able to meet all the requests. There will also be the fact that there will be scarcity of uh, dollar from the broad exchange because they are not having this regular pool. So you will expect uh, uh, an increase uh, at the moment. But if the central bank is able to step in and adequately fund the commercial banks, you will see that in the long run, you will have some uh, stability. And then I expect that the central bank will not just take this as an end in itself, it will now put in measures to make the BDCs to return to the roles they were originally set up to play. And that is to be at the retail end. That was the original plan. So I think that this, this time should be the time for CBN to stabilize the process and ensure that big uh, requirements, for instance, flows into those sectors that require them. So yes, there will be, uh, there will be downsides. And I think it is supposed to regulate the system so that we all operate going forward on a sustainable basis that we fund uh, productivity and that we allow other users in the economy who, for instance, do not really uh, require much funds to be able to go to the uh, BDCs uh, and so on and get, uh, and get their needs. Uh, but I think that something needed to be done to curb the, 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 the fall in the value of Naira vis-a-vis uh, -vis the dollar. I think this is a step that we need at this time. But the CBN should not take it as an end in itself. The CBN has, still has the responsibility and a very huge one of reining in the commercial banks so that we do not have uh, nothing to show for the very bold step that I think the CBN has taken. Uh, our agreement with the new development is to the extent that we have always believed that there is to streamline the process of access to forex because we don't need forex for frivolous things. This is not the time for that. This is the time to tighten up and ensure that we allocate the little uh, foreign exchange we have into the productive sector so that we can reflect the economy. And so it should not be uh, for uh, frivolities. So I, I think this is what informed uh, the decision that was taken by the CBN. And anyone who is interested in reflecting the economy in getting us far away from recession and solving the myriad of challenges that we have should yeah. be ready to take. Yeah. Uh, but I believe that the CBN should follow up, like I said, with effective monitoring. And man has offered, and I believe some other organizations have that, let us be part of the process so that we ensure that these funds flow to the sectors where uh, they are needed. Yes. And it should not just be to create an environment for the banks to be able to, uh, I mean, uh, continue to yes. do to what, they are uh, what they have done by not yes. making the things available to, to the productive sector. I, I think, uh, DG, very key in this conversation is the place of the deposit money banks and their role in this entire conversation. A lot of... Uh, uh, a lot rest rest on them right now to ensure that um, uh, the CBN achieves um, uh, uh, in totality all that it's aimed to achieve with this uh, suspension of allocation to BDCs. I'm looking at the figures. We have um, we've seen external reserves um, show up by 280 million in the last two weeks. Uh, naturally, this would have been maybe allocations that would have been been thrown into the BDC uh, sector of the economy, but here is back in uh, into the the external reserves and coffers. Interesting one. But then let me ask you quickly before I let you go. How are your members dealing, dealing with this initial, initial spike in the price of FX in the BDCs? How are they dealing with it, your members? Well, it's been very rough, I must tell you, uh, because uh, we, we need to be extremely careful here because whenever you have such a spike, it's negatively and significantly impacts on the business of manufacturing. You can imagine a situation where you have orders for your products, and you have to source your uh, this. You have to source your raw materials, your inputs, and your spares at much higher rate. You will not be able to vary the price you are giving to those you are supplying. So it's a dilemma for us. But it is better to have this shock treatment at this time, and then return to a period of stability. Uh, like I said again, it is very, very important that we do not lose the advantage of the moment. 
Otherwise, it will have been unnecessary to stop the uh, the allocation of funds to the BDCs if giving it to the banks will not leave us in a better situation. The Central Bank has a responsibility to Nigeria to ensure that the economy is better for this change that has been made. Because it's going to cause some pains to some people that have traditionally uh, relied on the BDCs. They will now be start out funds. So the economy has to benefit significantly from this. And I think this is where the weight lies heavily on the Central Bank of Nigeria. DG of uh, the, that's the Director General of Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, talking about him, Shegun Wajai Kadri. Thank you so very much for your time with us on today's business. We really hope and we wish and hope uh, uh, that um, things uh, in the FX uh, uh, our market begins to stabilize uh, pretty soon, uh, just maybe pretty soon. Thank you for your time with us into this business. Have a great day. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's move to some other stories in the world of business before we wrap up the show. Uh, Nigeria's planning uh, vacations uh, this summer might be faced with high fares, airfares, as uh, the price of flight tickets has surged compared to the pre-lockdown period in 2020. In a survey carried out by Naira Metrics, aside from the cost of conducting COVID-19 tests, both homes and abroad, home and abroad rather, the cost of uh, flight return uh, tickets to Accra, Ghana has has increased from an average of about um, 110,000 Naira in February 2020 uh, to 231,000 Naira as at Sunday, August 1, 2021. The hike affected locations like the United Kingdom, uh, Kenya, Rwanda and South Africa, among others. Now, for instance, the Lagos to Manchester flight ticket costs uh, has increased uh, from about 522,000 Naira to about 837,000 Naira within this same period under, under review. All right. Um, would I say sad narrative? But then that's the reality of our time. Thank you for staying with us on this business. God willing, we'll come your way again next time. Have a beautiful business day. But remember, COVID-19 is still very real and swift. Wear your face mask, protect yourself, and have a great day. Bye for now.